when it comes to the fear of God, I think forget the word fear as what we've associated fear, being afraid of someone, being afraid of God. And think of awe, respect, that sort of sense of reverence of who God really is. And therefore, there's no, no need to reconcile fear with love. Perfect love casts out fear. So it can't mean fear as in I'm afraid of God because I'm afraid of what he might do to me or I'm afraid of like, oh, we killed Ananias and Sapphira. Therefore, he could kill me if I get it wrong. Actually, God didn't kill Ananias and Sapphira. What happened was what Peter did, rather than administrating the love of God to them and forgiveness to them, Peter spoke death over them and the power of his words caused them to die. Now, if you look at the story, nowhere in there does God kill them or do anything to them but what they did the guilt that they felt coupled with the lack of forgiveness that peter showed them actually caused that to happen god didn't intend them because god's mercy will overcome whatever we do and um, so god doesn't kill people god doesn't punish people perfect love is an expression of god's best for people so god will want to bring good out of every situation that happens to people but when you look at the story of Annas's fire you'll find that peter cursed them rather than god and that showed the power of the words that the authority that peter had but actually he was operating out of the wrong spirit he should have forgiven them he should have chose to say if why have you done what you've done God forgives you, let's restore you. Because we should carry one another's burdens, not punish each other for it. So what would be a practical example of the fear of God in operation? When you get the real meaning of all reverence, respect and honor, would be me going before the throne of God and falling on my face, casting my crowns before him. That would be that sense of, wow, you are just so awesome. You are so wonderful. And there's a sense of, whoa, the weight of your presence is amazing. But then in another instance, I'll go and sit on the Father's lap on the throne of grace and feel nothing more than his pleasure and his desire. And it will just be me enjoying his presence in that way, and which I do a lot in that sense. So you know, don't think that just because the Bible says the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom, that that means being afraid of him. Honoring God for who he is as the source of all knowledge is the beginning of wisdom. So you can always take it a different way. Obviously, the evangelical sort of Christian world programs us to fear God, to keep us in line. Because if you don't fear God, then you might step out of line. Well, the reality is what keeps me following him is his love, is, is his joy and peace and the wonderful rest I have in him. Not because I'm afraid that if I don't do something right, he's going to punish me or something bad is going to happen to me. If I fear something bad happened to me, what I fear can come upon me because my fear is negative faith, if you like. I generate that around my life if I believe it. But God is never going to do that to me. So well, who will function in fear? The enemy wants to rob, kill and destroy. We'll use our fear against us, which is what happened with Ananias and Sapphira. What they did and the guilt and what Peter said allowed life to be removed from them. They were robbed of their future life because they weren't restored. Now, as soon as they went into the realms of heaven as part of the cloud of witnesses, which they now are, Every tear, every regret, everything would be washed away. They would have no negative memory of anything they did in the past. Everything would have been made whole. So they're in a place right now as part of the cloud of witnesses where they don't have any negative association with what happened to them. And they've no, no doubt forgiven Peter. And Peter realizes that what he did was not good either. So hopefully God would have convicted him and showed him that when he went into that realm, that he didn't have to carry any fear or regret or anything like that as well so no negativity god is unconditionally loving towards us there are consequences of what we do and those consequences can can cause things but god's mercy wants to overcome those consequences so don't ever feel guilt shame or condemnation because that is never coming from god always receive forgiveness 
always receive reconciliation and restoration because that is coming from God. God wants to love you in such a way that you know that you are unconditionally loved and you can learn to know who you are and enjoy life from that place of resting in his goodness and his mercy and in his love. If you enjoy these videos, would you please take a moment to like, comment and subscribe? It really does help. Thank you very much.